The next technique that I have doesn't keep the lines together, but it offers you more flexibility in terms of branching the lines that were parallel away from each other. So let's start again by putting some endpoints on our map. In this case, I'm just going to put one actually, because we're going to work from this and then the lines will be first be parallel and then branch away from each other. So I'll go and lock that endpoints layer, come back to paths, and I'm going to start again by just drawing a path that's sort of wavy that's going to come off of this point. I'm now going to use the offset path tool in order to create paths that sit to either side of this line. And so we need to actually create, even if we only wanted to create two parallel lines, we need to create three first and then we could delete one with this strategy. So I'm first going to select this line and then come up to object and path and offset path. And I'm using this menu which is actually going to create a new path rather than simply an effect on the original path. So if I click offset path here and I offset it by six points, okay then it will create this new path that sort of like the buffer tool in GIS will actually create a closed path all the way around that line. And the reason that it doesn't look great here is because that path actually has some fill right now. So I'm going to go ahead and with my selection tool just remove the fill from all those paths. And if I zoom in here you can see that there are now three paths that are offset um, so that they lay right parallel to each other. My next task is going to be to cut this path that actually loops all the way around the inside path so that there are three separate paths instead of one line and then one shape that encompasses a line. So if I come up to this end, I'm going to grab the scissors tool, which is buried underneath the eraser. It's also C on your keyboard. And then with this path selected, I'm just going to cut in two places so that there's an end cap here and then I'm just going to press delete twice in order to get rid of that end cap and I'll come down and do the exact same thing on the other end turn off my endpoints just for a moment so I can make this edit use the scissors I pressed C to get the scissors and then I'm going to cut this end cap right off and press delete with it selected and now we have three separate lines so now I can change the color of those independently I'll turn my endpoint back on so that it's sort of masking the rough end here and let's say that I want this path to be red. Whoops, I made the fill red. We don't want that. Select the stroke, make it red. Maybe make this one a blue. Perfect. And now, because these are three separate lines, we can actually grab points on them and move them away from each other. So these, point, these lines have been parallel up until this point. But the fact that they're three separate lines now gives us the flexibility to start fanning them apart from each other. So we can see the perhaps this is a subway line that, that parallels for a while and then sort of breaks off uh, into a new line after a point. The obvious downside to this is that you can't edit this curve with all three paths connected to each other anymore. So for instance, if I try to just move this yellow one, it's going to move on its own. And it would be very difficult to try to move all of these paths together and have them actually be parallel um, after, after we moved it. The third and fourth strategies I'm going to show you are very similar. They both use brushes in order to make these parallel lines. So I'm going to start off by getting my pen tool and just drawing, I'm holding the shift key or in this case I have smart guides turned on so I'm drawing a perfectly horizontal line. And then I'm going to offset this line in the same way that I did over here. So I've got it selected, I'm going to go up to object and path and offset path and offset it by six points. So we've got this path that's all the way around our original line. And then I'm going to turn on my rulers, show rulers, so I can drag some guides out and I'm going to chop, I've got all of that selected there, I'm going to go grab my scissors and then chop that path. I've got smart guides turned on so it's going to snap right to those points. And I'll chop the center one too so that we've got a blunt end right here where all three lines meet on the same vertical. Do the same thing on the other end. So now if I come to view and guides and clear my guides, you can see I've got three lines that are right next to each other and they all end right on the same verticals. Now I can make each one a different color depending on what series I want. And then come up to my brushes panel here, expand that a little bit, and then just select the three of those together and drop them into my brushes panel. We want to make a pattern brush, say OK, and this is going to represent the type of pattern that would be used to make a straight portion. We're not even going to bother assigning patterns for the other types of portions of line. I'll hit OK, and now if I was to draw a curve, 
and then apply that brush to it, you can see it's applied that all the way along. And this is pretty handy, except for the fact that if we were to take this handle and make a really tight curve out of that, because it's being made out of all these little line segments, there are going to be some slivers that appear. So you can see it's actually white in here. There's a little sliver right there where it's not quite mitering those sections particularly well. And then on top of that, if we were to select this line and come up to Object, and say expand appearance, it would expand it into all of these little segments of lines. So it's just not as clean a representation of these lines as it was over here where we're using the same path to describe the entire length of that line. The other method you can use also employs brushes, but rather than having line segments that make up the brush, we're actually going to use area segments. So if I took this piece right here, copied and pasted it, and then before I made a brush out of it, came up to object and said expand, and I'm going to be expanding the stroke of that object. You'll see now I have areas. Now if I make a brush out of that, we'll make the same pattern brush and we're going to be describing the straight segment of that. We'll hit OK. When we use that brush to make our line, it better represents those really tight corners, but also there's a downside where if we were to select that object and come up to object and expand the appearance, these are not even going to be constructed out of little line segments, they're now constructed out of little areas. And it's mitered those areas together in order to create these complex curves. But it really leaves us with very little opportunity to edit the paths of these lines or to break these lines apart and have them continuously represented throughout their length.